Hello, good evening. Hello, good people. Welcome to Not Right, Not Wrong, the podcast on 92.6 The Spot. Thank you for joining us again for season four in full effect. This is Tamika. And with me, season four, cuatro, numero cuatro, (laughs) see? And with me tonight are the usual suspects. We have, who I'm going to start with today? Oh, no. Mm. Eh, See what? Let's start with you. Let's welcome you into the space. Mm -hmm. How are you, my friend? I'm alive and well, D1, the queen of NRNW. It's a pleasure to be in your company. Ah, thank you. I curtsy to you, my brother. <laughs> if I'm the queen, you're like court jester or something. Something good like that, right? No. No, that's not it? No. Oh. Hey, hey, hey. I'm just dark Mark. Okay. <laughs> dark does it daily. Listen, we don't really no. get into these monikers <laughs> that, that happen each week. But dark does it daily. You want to let the people know what you mean when you say that? No, nah, that's gas station. Gas station. <laughs> double entendre. <laughs> all right. Double entendre, gas station, mark is double jointed, all of those things. <laughs> <laughs> How you know that? Yo, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Do y'all remember when being bow legged was the joint? Y'all remember this? I remember that. When you <laughs> young, yeah. And people used to lie about that shit. Yeah, I'm bow legged. Yeah. No, no, no. And what else? People was like, yeah, I'm double jointed. It's double Man, jointed. Yeah, 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 double jointed. <laughs> and they would do the little trick with the trick with their pinky, though. If you actually were, you could do like, I can't do it. But I know what you're talking about. I, I remember it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no doubt. No but doubt. people would fake bow legged all the time and purposely try and walk with it. <laughs> <laughs> That was you mostly know, dudes. That was mostly dudes trying to front like that because they thought girls like that. You know what I'm got, saying? How you can't did. take bow leggedness because eventually, unconsciously, you're gonna start walking correctly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're gonna be like, "Yo, what's up? Your legs? Oh shit, nah, ma." <laughs> <laughs> and then we found out like it was a bone deficiency. Like, oh, <laughs> right, right, you know. Just yeah. Ja in the house. How Jay, are you, Jay. My friend? Yes, the ma'am. Emperor. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Everything above sea level. Always good to be with you guys. Always good to be with you, Empress. Let's get it in. We got another session, another live, another dope session forthcoming, I'm sure. So I'm here to rock out with y'all. Let's get it. That's what's up. That is what's up. Every day above sea level is a good day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're ready. <laughs> oh. So here we are above sea level. Before we get into the topic today, I just need to shout out Morgan State University, homecoming weekend. Okay, okay. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm on right. campus, on the yard, on the bridge, nice. all the nice. events, all the parties, nice. all, the, all the stuff that happens. At, and have any of you ever been to an HBCU homecoming? No, nah, I've never been. I believe I, yeah, I. I believe I have. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think I have. Yeah, H. Um, Howard. How? Oh, Howard. Yeah. Yes. In Howard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Howard. Don't yeah. Howard hold the title for the best homecomings? Whoa, 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 buddy. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, nah, that's, pull up. That's the word on the street. He's up with word I'm on the saying, street. I'm not I'm just asking. First of I'm all, we asking. don't have no word on the street segment, so ease up with that talk, <laughs> with all of that. We gotta, we gotta start that. That's, <laughs> what I'm yeah, that's my next topic. Word, Word on the street is. Word on the street. But listen, shout out to all HBCUs. I'm not even going to get into it with Howard because Howard is the mecca, right? Can't nobody argue with Howard um, except for, for Hampton. They get into, you know, who's the real HU and all of that stuff. So mm-hmm. let them have that. But um, there's nothing on this planet like an HBCU homecoming. 
So if you mm-hmm. haven't been, you need to get to one. If you've been, you need to get back to one. It's a good time all around. Nice. So yeah. you went recently? No, no, no. It, um, it, the homecoming is coming up. Oh, so. it's coming up. All okay. Right. This weekend. Right. Yep. Oh, this yep. weekend. Okay. Uh, yep. So I right. had to. I had to. <laughs> I show up and show out a little bit. Yeah, That's yeah, why yeah. she's glowing. Yeah. I look hype. I look hype. You look yeah. hype. You look like you ready. <laughs> That's, I mean, that's a good thing, right? You can't, so what? You can't go to a to a homecoming kind of half stepping. You gotta, you gotta so come what? in your full in your full shine. It's like Friday through Sunday, or it's the whole weekend, right? Um, it actually starts. Some of the festivities start like a few days before, but the weekend, the Friday through the Sunday, is when you got you have the parade, you have the football game, you have the band, you have um the frats and sororities are stepping you have um walking on the yard you know that's Mm. when you walk on the yard and you see all the people that you tried to smash way back in the day you you give the you know the long hugs to and everybody's watching to see what happens ain't nobody saying a bunch of stuff but everybody's watching like oh that hug was a little bit long wasn't it Uh uh uh-huh uh-huh and then, you know, there's a lot of drunken debauchery and Friday night, Saturday night is, you know, the whole the whole mm-hmm. thing. And then Sunday, there might be some brunches and some recovery and some recap. That's when you sit down with your homies and you sit down with your girls and you go, did okay. you see? Yeah, I yes, saw yes, yes. <laughs> A lot of smashing, a lot of smashing going on, a lot of telly action. Well, I, I, I'm not going to say that. I'm not not going to say that, but I'm not going to say that either. I'm with you. I'm with you. You know, we grown at this point, so no, it's a no lot doubt. of reminiscing. No That's doubt. It. Yes, it's yeah. all innocent, innocent fun. Yeah. And then when yeah. everybody go to work, like nothing happened. Nothing happened. <laughs> nothing happened. Until you start getting the text messages, yo, don't post that picture. Yo, yeah. who went live? You know I was <laughs> live. Who I just it's too late for that. Yeah. It's too late. Uh-huh. It's too late. Yeah. Now it's the fallout. You got, you know, a month or two of recovery trying to bring your marriage back together. <laughs> you told me you was going to see your mother. Right, right. <laughs> Big fallouts. Big fallouts. Yeah. Well, I, I did. I did see my yeah. mom. I yeah, did. Right? <laughs> you know, you don't see live close by. <laughs> you know? Hey, I just you skipped through for a second. Just for a second. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, she lives in South Carolina. Yo, she lives close by. I mean, I'm right there. That's right there. I'm up on 95. I'm right yeah. there. It's right there. Exactly. It's right there. It's been hours like, I wasn't high. even paying attention. It was like muscle memory. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. Yeah. So then you got to recover so that you can do it all again next year and and promise that you're not going to get into the same trouble that you got into the year before. The year before. Uh-huh. Yeah. What if your wife want to come with you, though? Ooh, that's a big debate now. That's a big debate about whether or not you bring your current spouse partner to yeah, yeah. home. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's like, that's like your dice, husband right? going that's on the dice. girl's trip. You understand? Like your husband going on the girl's trip. And if, you're, if your partner does, if your partner didn't go to any HBCU, you're going to have a hard time explaining the culture of an HBCU home. <laughs> if your partner went to a different HBCU, they probably understand a little bit of the culture of it. And so mm-hmm. you might get away with some of that. But mm-hmm. there's still some stuff that you know you're not supposed to be doing. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 They wouldn't understand. They just wouldn't understand. Mm-mm. They wouldn't understand. Mm-mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Be- yeah, all the best, man. Enjoy Good yourself, time. D1. Yes, enjoy that. Yes, yes yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing these pictures that you don't want to be on Instagram Live or, right. or oh. formerly known as Twitter or the book and all that. I wasn't talking about me. I was talking about those other people. <laughs> those other people. <laughs> the whole weekend, people just going to be like this walking around the whole weekend. <laughs> Everybody, got, everybody, everybody got their phone up. Everybody. The whole weekend. Yo, what's up, Chimik? How you been? Yeah, you good? No, no mm-hmm. doubt. How you been? The whole time they like yeah. this. <laughs> yep. Everybody phone dying. Damn. Yeah, right. 
Everybody and then you got to go through your footage when you get home and be like, got it, got it, caught it. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, everybody phone on 6% though. They yo, what, to yo, what Drake said in his song, so you get back, right? You back home with the missus, right? What Drake said in one of his songs, he said, she going to see some shit if she keeps scrolling to the left. Uh, I can't remember what song, but he said that in one of his songs. So, yeah. Yo, anytime a guy goes to war, anything like that, you know, freely, hey, babe, let me see the phone. You got pictures? Yeah, check it out. Mm -hmm. Trust and believe in our mind. We like, oh, my God, please let her stop scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one is nice. Oh, you went? Oh, you saw this? This. And you can't grab the phone. You, you can't, can't grab the phone. You oh. can't grab the phone. Don't grab the phone. No. You got it. You got it. You got Huh, what? Yeah. Oh, babe, go see what that is. I gotta make a phone call real quick. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> please stop scrolling. Please. <laughs> oh, the desperation. Please make her right, stop. What Josh said, well, we had the show on power of the mind. You gotta put this in your mind that your <laughs> fucking friend call. Please, John, right, call there me. Go. There you go. John, call me, please. You got to put that in the universe that he called. Call me Two right swipes now. before that picture. Right. Call me right now. Put it and out. And then it pop up. John, yeah. come. Oh, God. <laughs> talk to me. Yeah. But you can't talk right. Listen, listen. You. Life, <laughs> yo. <laughs> You'd be like, whatever you need, whatever you need it, just know I always got you. Just like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> give me liver, blood. Wait, <laughs> like I got you. Just call me. <laughs> yo, this strange enough is kind of a perfect segue into our topic for tonight. <laughs> It's kind of perfect. Mm. So tonight, I want to talk a little bit about family secrets. <laughs> and I feel like we already in that territory a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty good segue. We already segment. did. Yeah, pretty good segue. Uh-huh. Yeah, th those things, those things that, um, when I'm talking about family, I'm talking about like biological family, but we maybe could stretch it out, right? Because um, I got a... I got an HBCU family. We all got extended family and friends who are holding some of our skeletons, holding some of our secrets, sure. not letting them out. Um, probably still got some some skeletons in the closet that we, we're not letting skeletons out today, y'all. So if that's what y'all think is happening, that we're not opening that closet door tonight. We're going to leave the closet door shut. Fair? Right. <laughs> Fair you got to die with those things. You got to die with that. That's it. That's it. What is it a secret for? If we go and tell it today? No. Facts. No. So we are taking those to the grave. But when we think about family secrets, right? When you think about the family that you were born into and or grew up in. And this is a kind of a timely topic. I thought about this um, a couple of weeks ago. And within the past week or so, Kerry Washington has been doing her book tour. I don't know, have, have any of you seen or heard about her interviews? I saw some of it on Channel 7. And um, some of the history that I, I saw, I, I didn't know that at all. Which part? When she was a little kid and um, she went back to her old elementary school, I believe. I don't know if it was elementary or junior high. And she spoke about when she realized she wanted to become an actor. Oh. I didn't watch the whole thing, but mm -hmm. I, I watched some of it. And it, it it was deep. I believe Robin Roberts was interviewing her. Am mm -hmm. I correct? Yeah. I didn't yeah. watch all of it. But I could I could always watch it because this is streaming. So I'll check it out. If you saw the whole thing and then you think it's that good, I'll check it out. I didn't see the whole thing, but I saw enough of it. Ja, how about you? You, I saw you nodding your head as well. Yeah, her, her, and also heard about Kirk Franklin's. Oh, Kirk Franklin. Yeah, yeah. Kirk, I didn't Kirk, hear about Kirk Franklin. Yeah, Kirk Franklin. Uh, he also he also had a um had a conversation with his mother about uh the whereabouts of his uh biological father. Similar similar situation. Yeah. And this was recently? 
Yeah, it was recently. Yeah, yeah. And he he um and yes, I think I think it's a similar situation. I didn't I didn't uh see the interview, but um it was a similar situation. Same similar to Carrie's. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, see, so we we got our finger in the post here, not even doing it on purpose. We got our finger in the post. Mm -hmm. Um so I think um, C1, you were talking about Spence Academy. I think she attended Spence, which, which is like super duper prestigious. I think it's high school though, I think. I'm not sure, I can't remember, but mm -hmm. um, it's kind of a big deal. But the part that I wanna kind of hone in on is what Ja is talking about. I don't know if you saw the part C1 where she talked about, she just recently found out that her biological dad is not her biological dad. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't know that. I Yeah, I didn't watch it enough to know that that was the end result. I'm assuming they saved that to the end, or did they? It was, it was kind of in the middle, in the middle of that Robin Roberts okay. interview, but it's also been the sound bite all around the place. Okay. Um, and so what I understand the backstory to be is that there were some um, fertility challenges. And so um, they decided to, her, Kerry Washington's parents were together at the time and decided to get a sperm donor, but did not tell her until she was in her forties and she was about to do um, ancestry, right? She was, mm -hmm. she was going to find out her lineage and they, her parents said, we, we got a problem. Oh, I gotta <laughs> tell her now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Is that is that how you heard it too, Ja? Yep, exactly the same way. She was about to do ancestry, and the parents was like, "Whoa, uh, whoa, call her, call her, <laughs> get her over <laughs> here, get her here." Uh, yeah, yeah. They had to bring they had to bring her in real quick, like, "Uh, baby, <laughs> <laughs> got something to talk to you about." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm hmm. So I can't even imagine what that must feel like um and she talks a little bit about it on in her interviews and she talks about it in her book um but what i i kind of want to keep that in the back of our minds and use that as a little bit of a jumping off point um mm -hmm. about whether or not there have been secrets in your family that have impacted you in your adulthood Right. Like some and secrets, sometimes a thing in my mind, some of the secrets are things that are not known. And then sometimes they're known, but they're not talked about widely or in the, out in the open. Right. They're the things that are whispered about. And some of the some of the darker secrets are like when people talk about don't don't let your kid spend the night with uncle charlie right yeah, yeah. nobody really talks about what <laughs> happens, but yeah. everybody knows. Not uncle, you got your kid is with Uncle Charlie. Get your kid here now, right? Mm -hmm. Don't leave your kid in the room or anything like that. So it's kind of an open secret, but it's not fully discussed. Yeah. Do y'all have things like that in your family that have been kind of ruminating and are affecting you in your adulthood? Child, what say you? Are you telling me? Yeah. Um, but before I answer that question, I def I definitely uh in my opinion, I attribute I attribute that to the silent generation. The silent generation was truly silent. A lot of a lot of family secrets unraveled that um that bestowed upon us um as boomers and Gen Xers. Right. When we when we go to when we go to big family gatherings and family reunions, we finding out the we finding out the dude or the girl that we've been friends with, you know, and chilling with and hanging out with was our damn cousins. All along, <laughs> or 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 were or, or, or our siblings, mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Doing part to the silent generation being silent, as well as a good portion of the baby boomers, you know, our, us Gen Xers, we get the we get the surprises and the the reveals, like holy shit, what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, so yeah, but um, and me personally, my end, um. Yeah, family. We have we have family secrets, but it uh, I can't say it affected it affected me as a human being because um, it affected my mother. My mother had a similar situation to Carrie. 
uh, where where she found out she found out her father wasn't her father. Her, bi her, her biological father is white, so my biological grandfather is a white man. Mm. Yeah, he's he's uh, I believe he's Scottish. You know, wow. so, yeah, that's where that's where I get this nose from. I feel like that yeah. takes us back to season one and your affinity for white women, right? That's no, uh, that's negative. <laughs> <laughs> now it comes out. <laughs> now it all comes out. If y'all weren't watching back in season one, go check out season one now. Uh, yes, people. I remember that episode. Oh, that is false. That is false. <laughs> I ain't never said so much things. I ain't never said such things. <laughs> I said that uh, my, if you want to call it, interracial experience with the Latina, but that's really interracial. That's not really interracial because Latinas are part of the African diaspora. So I know. And then we had to talk about Wonder Woman. <laughs> yes. And who yes, I remember what I said. Who I found out it happens to be uh, a Chicana. Yes. So I was like, oh no wonder I liked her because she has played. <laughs> she has played. Yes, yes. <laughs> it wasn't because of your Scottish roots. No, no, not at all, not at all. Do you ever met him? Linda, Linda Carter is Chicana. Yes, or half white, half Chicana, something like that. She got some Chicana blood in her. Yes. No, I never met him. Mm -mm. Okay. My, uh, never met him. Never. They know about it. This is a story my mother shared with me. Okay. And the first time my mother, and the first time my mother laid eyes on him was at his funeral. Oh, oh wow. wow. Yeah, 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 like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, 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 like that, like that. That's a lot to deal with. Yeah, it was, it was, it was. Yeah, it was. So she shared that story with me. I said, oh, get out of here. What? You find out. <laughs> yes, yeah. so my biological granddaddy is a white man. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did she deal with that? I mean, she's not here to tell the stories, but can you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I interpret it as um, it was the, the I, I I interpreted she harbored some resentment. Um, it, it caused it caused a strain. It caused a strain between her and my grandmother. Rest in peace, grandma. Yeah, it caused a strain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, <clears throat> the grandfather the grandfather that I knew was a, a dignitary in Jamaica. And that was a father that she knew, and she thought all this time he was her father. So that that grandfather who adopted her, that's the one I know. I knew him. I remember being with him when I was a child, a little boy. You know what I mean? When I was, yeah. when I, when I stayed out there in Jamaica briefly when I was a little boy. I remember that grandfather, but I didn't know. So she shared with me who my biological grandfather was. Yeah. But you don't feel like that secret impacted you directly? No, no. Maybe, maybe uh, once I get back to therapy, maybe it would. I don't know. <laughs> but to me, I don't I don't feel nothing. But, you know, once you go into therapy, you know, some shit come out like, oh, yeah, my granddaddy was white. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. He he may have been a Jets fan. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> you you go. Go. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Right, right. You know, is that why I'm so pro black? Because I'm fighting my white. <laughs> <laughs> Fight the power. <laughs> it's an internal battle, son. Uh -huh. It's an internal yeah. battle it's a, you fight. You know, it's the internal battle I'm doing. Is that what's happening? Is that why I'm so pro-black? <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah. But yeah, that's what that's what I got. That's what I got. C1, what about you? What do you think about um, family secrets? Why do they even exist? And are you impacted by any family secrets? Um, it may be a lot of family secrets. It's probably a lot of family secrets in my family. Why they exist? I don't know if I can actually answer that. I I guess just for the same reason secrets exist, but it's always the person who is the um uh, secret tea. I guess I just made up that word. <laughs> That's a dope word. Thank you. Dope word. I like that it. is unaware that it's a secret. You you understand? Like the first thing you said, no one leave your kids about I think you said Uncle Harold. 
Uncle Harold probably don't know that everybody talking about him. You understand? Like, you know, maybe he's a pedophile or some shit like that. You know, he come to all events and everything regular. So the funny thing about family secrets, whoever it is, the secret he is, how come they always invited to shit? So if this is the person oh, you talking invited. about, yeah. why you keep inviting him? I know. I, I, that's a solid, solid generation, yo. Yeah, I listen. <laughs> but to contribute to the fray and the topic at hand, what we're talking about, uh, one one of the things, I mean, it, it didn't contribute in any regard to me growing up and and all my my youth and my youth now, um, and these charming good looks. But um, when I was younger, uh, I was young. one of my uncles on my pop side is um, my uncle Jimmy. He was the youngest out of all of my father's siblings. I believe it was about eight of them. He was the youngest, super cool uncle. Lived in Philly. Uh, I think he was a warden in the jail. Super cool, super cool uncle. Sometimes when we was traveling to Maryland back and forth, uh, we used to pick him up in Delaware. And then we'd go on down because my pops was from Maryland. So I can't remember when this conversation took place or how old I was, but I know at some point during the course of me and my pops speaking and having one of our heart to hearts, he said he didn't know if Uncle Jimmy was his brother. Or his, um, or if his father was Uncle Jimmy's father, mm. I'd say, wait, what? So our grand, my grandfather, who was his pops, who I knew, I'm like, wait, so that's not that as son. So my pops was like, we don't know, but none of us have the heart to ask my grandmother. You understand that that's a sign of disrespect. And and on the topic, like Josh said, the silent generation, some things you just got to let lie, because if you speak it up, that's a sign of disrespect, especially to our elders. You know, the elders are, for the most part, the gatekeepers of these secrets. You can't just go up to the elder. Are you my mom? Are you? You, you can't do that. And that's why the secrets just fester on and on and on. You understand? And so my pops, he wasn't going to go up to his mom and ask, listen, mom, you mind if I talk to you? We was wondering about Uncle Jimmy if that's, that's never going to take place. So we just accepted Uncle Jimmy for him being our uncle and just enjoying being with him. He was just cool as fuck. But, you know, the siblings and all always wrestled with that and, and was trying to figure it out because they always thought that Uncle Jimmy was the favorite. He got, you know, they all, my grandmother always treated him different. Not that she didn't love the rest of her siblings any, but he always got special treatment being who he was. So, you know, just to contribute to your question, that was one of the things that came out. But to this day, no one knows, nor did anyone ever ask. My, my grandmother transitioned, grandfather transitioned, Uncle Jimmy transitioned. So that's one of those things that would go to the grave. If we didn't know then, we definitely won't know now. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That um, you know, and as I listen to both of you talk, some of it sounds like um once your family, your family as well. So some things maybe don't matter as much um, after a period of time. But it also makes me think about, you know, if Uncle Jimmy needed a blood transfusion or a liver transplant or something like that, then some of that information becomes important biologically, but the heart is still the heart, right? Watch. With your family, that some of that won't matter. But there are some secrets that kind of do make a difference, right? So in the in the interest of when we think about if they're this is a this is a little bit dark, but we can go into we could go here. Um if there is a family pedophile, right? If there is someone, an uncle or an aunt for that matter, who has been accused of touching the kids or doing something like that, there is danger in not just calling it out for what it is and and then expecting the kids like 
to wrangle up the kids and don't go there? And why does this uncle or aunt keep getting invited to the events? Why is this happening? Yeah. Like that's that's crazy and it's is dangerous, right? It's dangerous to kind of keep that hush hush. But I think in my family, and I ain't gonna go into but like <laughs> I think there's a little bit of every fam of every secret in my family. There's a little I'm like, we got that too. That's a, come on, we can't we can't dodge no family secrets. All right, right. It's like what don't we got, right? <laughs> <laughs> not no, listen, D1, not just if, just real quick, or it's a situation where it may not necessarily be a family secret, but I know we've all experienced this. We go to a family member house and, you know, before we get in there, you know, your parents just say, listen, don't go in such and such room or don't knock on the door. Mm. <laughs> like, why? Because um, such and such is in there. Uh, what's what's gonna happen? Is he a monster or something like that? <laughs> There's always that situation where you go to some part, uh, some person is in the room. So why are we going over there? <laughs> and you don't realize these things till when you are adult, and yeah. you think so. It's a person over there that may or may not necessarily bring harm to you and me and us. <laughs> but this person lives there in this room. So we can't disturb this person or knock on the door because they may, but we're still going over there. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Why? Let them come to my to our house. Let the good yeah. ones come to our house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You understand? But, but he lives with someone, an aunt or something that loves him, but we can't disturb him or her. You, you understand, you know, and then they may or may come out the room. <laughs> go back in the room. That's it. Hey, hey, you know, it's, yeah. Oh, I said, that's not, wait, stop pointing. You can't. <laughs> you know what happened if you point? You already know. Yeah. Oh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> you know and. Yeah, I can't explain these dynamics. I and I know that's that's probably happened to all of us. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think, but I, I think, I think, uh, I think we could, I think we could put a, a feather, a feather in our tie by saying that we we broke that cycle because we because we expose it and we tell it. That's a I, fact. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I think our generation we we blowing we blowing shit up, like we calling it out, like yo. Stay, stay away from me and mine. So it's, it's going to be a big issue. You know what I mean? Son. <laughs> Come on, we all we ain't going over there. You ain't coming yeah, over there. Yeah, yeah, you ain't going over there. We ain't going over there. You know what I mean? So that's why they invented Facebook. <laughs> but even before social social media came on, I think I think we, I think our generation broke that pattern to a degree. Mm -hmm. We we spoke out when we were old enough and got the confidence and we we're you know growing up or becoming young adults now we we were speaking out on we were speaking out on stuff we still have remnants of solid generation uh i you know solid generation trauma and uh behavior mm -hmm. but more so exposing than not exposing you know because we we still kept our little secrets hand there but we we didn't keep them, keep them to ourselves. We shared it with people that we cared about. Like, yo, that dude over there, like, yo, he, he messes with kids or he messes with minors. Oh, word? Yo, we should beat his ass. Nah, nah, nah. He good, he good. Just leave him alone. <laughs> he good, he good. Just, yeah, nah, nah. He good over there. Just leave him alone. But, yo, yeah. If he, if he, come, if he come touch one of the hours, yeah, we're going to handle him. You know what I mean? So we, we, we're more like that. <laughs> yeah, we ready to... We ready to put some hands and feet or call the cops. You know, when you mentioned that, I just tried to try, I was trying to think of the words that I was looking for to describe the person in the room mm -hmm. and how our elders would kind of frame it. So mm -hmm. what they would say, you know, because they wasn't trying to come up with any, you know, um, psychological term that a doctor or a psychologist or psychiatrist would use. So they would say, when we ask, when we go to the house about the person in the room, what they would say, 
they slow. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. Slow was the word. Slow. Yeah. Low. Yeah. You're, but it can't be defined. Yeah. I guarantee we was 10 or 11, and our parents said, Yeah, they, they slow. And we said, Define slow. I bet you <laughs> get popped in the mouth. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, you can't sound ask like, me. You don't you ask know, yeah, Sound yeah. like we're sassy. We're being sassy. Mm -hmm. Hey, what, what the hell is slow? <laughs> I mean, granted, we understood it. And we know, oh, we don't want to go in there. That person's slow. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it, like, damn, what, what is slow? Yeah, what you mean by that? <laughs> yeah. Or special. And we didn't, we didn't really understand. Special. That's special. the other one. The other one. Yeah, special. Special. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, special. I remember touched, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And I we remember, didn't, I don't I even think that. that we really knew what it meant. I think that we had a picture in our head now. We oh the person in the room that's touched or that's slow or that's special. So we gotta stay away from that person. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. We didn't really know what it meant. We just knew stay away from them. Stay away. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Stay away. Yep, yep. That's right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. But I, I do think, John, to your point, I do I one of my thoughts was whether or not we are kind of breaking that pattern set by the silent generation. And I do think that we are to some degree. I know, especially with my older kids, before my oldest son went away to college, my oldest son, I only have one son, before my eldest went away to college. Well, um, now. I... <laughs> See one? <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you get a phone call. <laughs> Yo, I saw the show. Yeah. Yo. Yo. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Let me shut up. Shut up. Okay. I almost <laughs> being able to self-censor yourself in the moment is a is a Valuable. skill. That's valuable. valuable. Oh, uh, <laughs> but um, dang, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, when I sent him away to college, before I sent him away, I sat down and I had a conversation with him about drinking, and it wasn't just a generic run of the mill conversation. It was, hey, look around at your family and see some of the patterns in your family that nobody is really talking about. But notice what goes on in your family. And then let me tell you about some other family members that you haven't been exposed to. Maybe they passed away, whatever. I need you to know that you might have a propensity to alcoholism. Mm -hmm. That's important information. Nobody in the family is talking about it, though. Mm. We all see it. We all start to slide. Let, okay, that person, let's slide this person out the door. Let's put the liquor away. This person is coming over. Put that away. Nobody is talking about it though. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you what this is. And I also, this is not so much of a family secret, but it's something that doesn't get talked about, at least in my family very openly. And it's anger. It is like, there is a high propensity for anger in my family. Like there's a lot of stories. Some of them are really funny, <laughs> but the root of them is an explosion, is a fight, is an argument, is all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. And I had to talk to all of my kids about anger and how to manage that because that's something that it's, it's just sitting around. And if you watch it, if you sit in the family long enough and watch it, watch the family you'll notice how it bubbles up and how it um like it makes division this person won't talk to this person won't talk to this person and if you see these these two people together you better step in you better not let them sit next to each other because we're going to have a problem mm -hmm. so i i think family secrets um or not not necessarily a secret but the things that go unspoken that you might be able to see, but the elders, the see, the silent generation, and some of the baby boomers too, um, are not talking about. I think it does if affects me for sure. A lot of it affects me. But so, are there ways that you're purposely trying to bring some of these things to light? 
and your families. C1, what say you? I would have to figure out what it is first before, you know, I, I try to bring these things to light. And, you know, I would really need to research both sides to see what it is. I mean, the first thing I would think about maybe in regards to health, um, I believe on both sides, diabetes run. Um, I think on my pop side, I believe it may be some heart issues. Um, that's the first thing I would think of. Like those things need to come to light as far as health, because that can continue to go on. Um, I mean, I don't remember having a conversation, you know, with my parents or they have to kind of figure what runs in and what you should do in regards to your health to maintain and sustain this. Or maybe I wasn't even interested in knowing about it until you get a whole lot older and then you had these conversations. But with the grandma had, I know there are a number of amputees on my mom's side from diabetes. You understand? So um, not that that was a family secret, but I just know that my mom and dad was just so vigilant about me and my brother and sister not eating much sugar. So even when we got up to eat breakfast, we all at the table. So let's say we had uh, conflicts. We all had our bowl and our mom would just really watch how much sugar we put on it. So we go, we get the spoon. We're going to dig apps. That's too much. We ain't even take the spoon out, but it's, it's too much. So we put barely this much sugar, like a sprinkle. Mm. Like she was really concerned with most of with the health thing. I mean, um, as far as the did anger, did you thing, ever tell your mom that you would throw in the Brussels sprouts in the garbage? Did that ever? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you, but the funny. So me, my brother and sister, we thought that was hilarious, but she didn't think that was funny. She she didn't think it was funny. I mean, she uh huh. We ripped roaring laughter because of how we devised a plan, put it together and executed it. But she didn't think that was funny. It was more so, her message was more so, I bet y'all appreciate it today. I bet y'all appreciate it today in regards to, you know, the vegetables and the things that she cooked. Mm -hmm. But at that time, listen, Brussels sprouts taste like, oh my God, hot glass or something. I don't even know how to describe it. Brussels sprouts, you kidding me? And that smell. Now, Again, it's healthy. First and foremost, she's thinking of our health. I know it's growing up big and strong and things of that nature. But yeah, that stuff had to go out the window then. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I'm sure there may be a lot of other things that I may be doing indirectly. Because a number of my, um, on both sides, they didn't necessarily go to college, but I didn't have this in mind to go to college and get my degree with them in mind to say, listen, let me do this. I know my mom, she wanted to do it to show her siblings. So she went on and she got her degrees and she got her master's, her master's plus. And I was really a moment of pride for her because I don't think any of her siblings, sorry, one of them went to college, I'm sorry. But the rest of them never went to college. Mm. So education is another thing in regards to that, to where you want to lead by example. But I didn't have them in mind when I did that. And even, you know, my father and his siblings, um, I think one of them went to college. But in regards to the family secrets, like you said, these are things that I'm doing just to lead by example, not necessarily a secret thing. But this is something that I have in mind to do to just show the younger people coming up and, and just be mindful of. So those are the two things that I think about. Definitely health and um, education. Health and education, breaking breaking those patterns, breaking those trends. Yeah, and being healthy. I mean, come on, you know the type of stuff, you know, they ate when they was young. You know what type of food come out of the South. Mm -hmm. You understand? I don't think they was thinking about a Weight Watchers plan or anything like that. Or, you know, don't put too much salt or don't put, you know, you know what come with that type of diet. But now we're more conscious of it. We know what those things can lead to, you know. We know more, so we do better. Yeah. Yeah, we know more, so we do better. Ja, what about you? You doing better? You doing better or you doing worse? <laughs> doing better. Yeah, make, making, a, making a conscious effort to do better. 
But uh, I agree with Mark. It's the same same here. Uh, it will require doing more research, asking more questions. Um, I think that we get to this uh, certain age, um, um, us in our generation, we get to a certain age where we're well into our adulthood. We we're gonna start. We'll start asking these questions because we're comfortable now. We're grown now, and we want to know. We want to know certain things. So yeah, we we're not afraid to ask our parents or grandparents. Uh, we're gonna sit down and talk to them and and find out certain things and there's some and that and i and i think at their age there's some level of resignation so they're more apt to sit down with you and share and give you and give you uh, some information um just using using my father as an example um you know during his last days we sat down and had conversations he started sharing information of his past and how he was growing up so yeah, I learned um I learned some things. I learned a lot of things. Um I learned um a better understanding of who who he is and who he was and the the reason why he carried himself the way he carried himself because of his, his history and his background, his his upbringing and recognizing uh some of the traits that I carry uh from him. Um so um yeah, it's essential it, it's essential for us to have these conversations with our elders now because and because before you know it we're going to be elders and this is information that's going to be vital and important to us to pass down to our kids when we get to that point that moment of resignation we're able to sit down and talk to our kids and just pass on the jewels and the knowledge and what the advantage that we have is um information uh social media information i think uh baby boomers and silent generations the information was limited because they just had the library, if that, or word of mouth. We got library, we got social media, we got the internet, we got word of mouth, we got a gamut of um, information and resources. So in addition to speaking to our elders, we also can do research and um, create our own uh, uh, create our own wealth and knowledge to pass on to our children so they can move on and, and um, become better and be a better part of society. So it's it's uh it's it's important. It's time to do it's time to do the research. Yeah. We we definitely have a lot at our fingertips. Just the amount of um pictures and videos and documentation that we have of our lives at this point. Sure. There's a lot of information to to pass down, at least from this stage forward. Now we just have to get some of the, the ancestry stuff, mm -hmm. get some of the history. Yeah. So, and the the um, biology of it is really important, right? To understand what, what health concerns kind of run throughout your family and things like that. It's a big deal. Very what do you guys do when your kids ask you questions? Are you, are you honest? Are you straightforward or do you do you hold back a little bit? Mark, you know I'm going to you because you just had to giggle. What what happened? Nah, I listen, I told my daughter when she was very young, there's no question that she could ask me and I'm going to lie about it. Whether or not she liked the answer or not, I'm going to tell you the truth about everything. Anything you ever asked me, you know, how I was as a young kid, middle school, high school, how I was, 30s, 40s. If you ask me, I'm going to tell you the honest truth. You What's the hardest question she's ever asked you? Wow, the hardest question she ever asked me. Um, I, I think it normally has to do with, with fatherhood. Um, you know, my daughter and I, we always have these deep conversations because she just think of stuff to ask. Um, I, I think it had to do with me realizing that I was going to be a father and what is it that I decided to do at that point once that realization came into being. But it was it was less about me and more about her saying, well, dad, you knew I was coming. How did you change your life around? So I always say, well, what did you think I was doing before? Was I on drugs or alcoholic? <laughs> what? I didn't need to do a whole lot. You understand to start, you know, 
if the way the question sound as if I was destitute, you understand? Mm -hmm. Literally out in the street, sleeping in the subways, <laughs> and her mom came and tapped me, Mark, listen. <laughs> yeah. Let me clean you up. <laughs> what? We, I am? Oh, and then that's this when the Rocky music come in. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> now, push ups and all the shit ups. I went and got a haircut. I'm yeah. brushing my teeth now. That's how the question sound. What? So, Dad, what did you do when you know I was home? What did you need to do? And I said, you know, I didn't really need to do much, Marginal. All I needed to do was give you the love that I had within. That's it. I make it very simple, but she's, it, it seemed like she's looking for a different answer, something more prolonged, like, you know, like it's supposed to sound poetic, like, you know, that day when I found <laughs> out and then the stars <laughs> opened up. And at the same time, I saw the moon, I saw the sun, and then it was an eclipse. And then I felt <laughs> something. You, you know, it, 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 it needs to sound like that. I don't think my answer is uh, fulfilling enough for her. Yeah. That's because she's trying to put her biopic together. She got Tiana yeah. Taylor about it's her. Just, it's, just, it's just love. That's it. It's... It's just love. It's I make it as simple as possible because that's all it is. I I think so. That I think that's one of the toughest questions in in regards to that. Like, what did you think you needed to do? And you know, I just simplify. It, like, yeah, it's it's just love. But I'm honest with her about everything, as far as I was in my past, all the cheating I did, on uh, the different ways I was with women. You know, I'm truthfully honest about it. Then she asked me a question about regrets. I said, I don't regret anything. Because if you hold regrets, you could get ulcers. I can't do anything about yesterday. I can only improve about tomorrow. Um, and then questions about her dating. Um, what type of guy would I like for her? I said, well, what type of guy do you like? I don't need to like him. And I'm sure I won't. Mm -hmm. That's your decision. I can't pick a guy for you. You understand? You got to make that decision on your own. Whether or not I like him or not, it won't matter. And um, she's very traditional. So, of course, she's talking about being married. And she said, would the guy need to um, ask me for her hand in marriage? I said, no, he don't need to ask me. You marrying him. So what if I say, yes, you don't like to do it. It don't work out. Then I said, yes, that I wasted. I said, I'm not traditional in that regard. That That's all your decision, whether or not you like or you want to marry this dude. I'm going to give you my opinion about him once I meet him, but that's not up to me. I don't want you to put that on dad and then be like, well, dad, you know, that is your decision. You understand? Only you know how your heart feels and I will support it. Yeah. So we have these conversations, deep, thoughtful conversations a lot, a whole lot. Yeah. Okay. So that's what's up. Uh, my my daughter isn't at that stage yet. You know, she's a teenager. She's she's about hanging out, with school friends. She ain't asking them type of questions, but I'll be prepared. I'll be prepared. Yeah. When she's ready to. It's coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Is there any question she asked you so far that you're like? No, not at all. Not no. At all. Nope. She's she, she not there yet. She's not there yet. She's she's in her she's in her own growth and her own process and her own space of figuring things out and experiencing her own life and journey. So it's uh, coming. You about to get it. Yeah. <laughs> you about to get uh, it. Right right now, I'm chilling. <laughs> I'm chilling. I can't even. Uh, I, I, would, I would expect, yeah, I would expect it in the next 10, 15 years. God willing. <laughs> next 10 to 15 years. <laughs> yeah, you know, so she's, she's, you, still a teen. she's still a teen. She ain't asking them type of questions yet. Yeah. She's still a teen. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about you, D1? Any, any deep, insightful, thoughtful conversations you had to, had to, you know, Take a moment to answer. Um, 
Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, first of all, this is not about family secrets, but um, my son was, he must have been about, how was he? I don't know, maybe he was about three, four, five. He was somewhere in that age wow. range. Um, and I remember we were riding the bus. We were on the concourse on the one or two bus coming from 149th Street heading up. Mm. And the bus is crowded. It's a bunch of stuff going on. We got a seat though. We're sitting down. He's looking out the window and there's a man crossing the street walking a dog. And he looks at me and he goes, mommy, do men get dogs when they can't get a wife? <laughs> I was like, wow. Yeah. Wow. Probably yes. No. I said yes. I told oh, him yes. Yeah. <laughs> of course you would. Of course you would tell him. Yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I said, baby, you're brilliant. Yes, that's exactly what happened. He was like, great question, baby. Great question. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, I might have loved that women. one. And they can't get women, they get dogs. Yes, yeah, because they're the dogs, baby. Wow. I mean, what was this guy doing to the dog? <laughs> but not I you. Mean, but not I, you, my I'd friend. Like not you, not you, baby, not you. <laughs> I'd like to think this guy was just walking it. <laughs> <laughs> right now but damn yeah, I know you said yes I, I absolutely you. did I did so now yeah. that's in his head three four five years old you know what so that's pre-k you know well I back then I don't even know if they have if they have pre-k I don't think they did I think you actually you started in kindergarten he had to be younger than he had to be younger than Four, well, definitely younger than five, because he wasn't in, he wasn't in school yet. He was in school. Okay, okay. So he can't go back and tell his friends, like you know, your dad married to a dog. He could tell the people at childcare though. He probably, at childcare. It, it must have been something that was on his mind. I'm like, where did this come? This yeah, is not. You yeah, saw one man. man walking one dog. You've been thinking. <laughs> Damn. That's, so, that's, quite, that's quite the question. That is quite the question. It's yeah. quite the question. It's uh -huh. quite the question. But um, along that vein, I think it was just maybe, maybe like six years ago or so um, that my own parents started to tell me more. Like my dad started to tell me more about his childhood and telling me some stories that were important to him when he was like six, seven, eight, nine. And I was like, wow, that's like, I wish I had known. Like some, it it gave me some more information about mm. who he was in the world. Mm. And my mom, I remember, I don't even know what me and my mom were talking about, but somehow the relationship with her and my dad came into the conversation. And she was just like, Tamika, I tried. I, I just need you to know I tried, <laughs> like I tried. And it was, I think that was kind of the most, it's not a bunch, but it was like the most profound information she had given me about that relationship. Mm. I was like, I, I can relate to that. I I know what that means. <laughs> so you like, baby, I, I tried. I did what I could. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's so, coming from here. Yeah. That yeah. yeah. Right. Like, she said that with her chest. Yeah, yeah. I, I listen. I I try. You know what that means. Mm -hmm. we all know right. That. When you hear that, all of us got that in us. Like, oh, I know what that means. Yeah, of course. No doubt. Immediately. No doubt. No doubt. Yep. And then a few years after that, I had to explain to my older kids something similar about me and their father. I just had to be like, I tried. <laughs> like, I tried. Well, now that's honest. That that that's honest. Yeah. But it's it's I mean, in, in regards to that, it's always funny how to I don't know if that's the case for you, D1, but you know, 
my daughter, she asked both of us in regards to our relationship, why it dissolves, what led to the end. You know the story is always going to be different. You know that. You understand? So it's going to be my side, what I believe to be true, <laughs> and her mom's side, what she believed to be true. You understand? But during the course of these two stories, it's nothing in there disrespectful. Nothing in there out of malice, no finger pointing, but it's more so to say, it starts off with, I believe what happened was. Nothing, nah, let me tell you, man. One night I came home, nah, it's it's it's, it's, it's none of that. It always start with, again, this is my daughter's mom. So I got to start with respect. So it'll start with, well, I believe what happened was. And then she may ask, and I'd be like, well, daughter, it's up to you what you want to believe. She asks a lot of questions about, about that um, often because her mom and I broke her when she was seven. So mm -hmm. she's 24 now. So between those 17 years, just co-parenting and just getting that right and fine-tuning that, you know, that, that took some time. And just love had to be the basis. But one thing I wanted to ask both of you and keeping, I mean, it's not necessarily a family secret, but uh, one of the things when I was having these conversations with my parents, my mom and dad, when it came to mind, I would ask him, I would, I both asked my mom and dad, I said, how did they feel when they found out that Dr. Martin Luther King died? What was that day like? What did you do that day? How did my grandparents react and how their whole face just changed when they telling me that story and what the mood was like in the streets all over the country is just is dismal it's just a heartbreaking story from both of them mm -hmm. and them just thinking what they went through and what's gonna happen now come on we know what dr king was and what he meant to us what he stood for what he said and I'm just saying, and that just put a dark cloud on everything and everybody. And I asked them, you know, when Kennedy died, because you know, a lot of black people liked Kennedy. A lot of black people liked him. He he was a fan favorite of, of black people. So I asked them different questions like that, that'll relate to where were you when type of things. But when I asked him the King question, both of them, it was just, you know, about my grandparents crying. Um, my grandmother just not wanting to say anything that whole day. No, Nobody know what to say to each other. It's just quiet. And both of their stories, both of them mentioned everything just being quiet. Because no one know what to say to each other. I wouldn't know what to say to Jaja. We don't, we know this happened, but so for us, it's 9-11. You understand? Even though, you know, some of our parents may have got to witness that, but for them, like when King and Kennedy is same type of thing. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on that? Did you ever ask or well, I, I have a um I've kind of like I, I have a I have a civil rights um civil rights era uh story which uh almost happened with my mother. My mother almost um, my mother almost got arrested because she had a big afro and she looked like Angela Davis. And Angela Davis was within the, the area where my mother was staying. And I don't know, I forget whether she was in college or at home, but Angela Davis was staying across the street from her. And she she told me that she was, um, as soon as she stepped in, stepped inside, I'm trying to get the story straight. Um, let me get the story straight. I'm trying to recollect what she was saying, but anyway, um, the authorities was looking for Angela Davis, and there was a point where people thought she was Angela Davis because she had the afro just like her mother had the big afro, and mm -hmm. her and Angela Davis are the same complexion, that's that brownish caramel complexion, and so um, that at one point people thought it was her, but they looked. Elsewhere, I found out found the real Angela Davis, and they arrested her. I think this was doing. I think this was doing Angela Davis Black Panther days. Wow. Yeah, yeah. 
So, yeah, my mother. So they, uh, they put handcuffs on your mom and everything, the whole no, gamut? No, 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 they didn't. They didn't. But I think she said people were pointing to her thinking it was Angela Davis. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I guess somehow it got redirected and they found the real Angela Davis. And she is lucky. Yeah, yeah, she was very lucky. Yeah. But same Actually, same back era. in those times, because they yeah. were shooting first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had a big afro, just like her. Yeah, she, 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 she bears. Isn't it of... funny? That's all it took was the afro and the skin complexion. That's mm-hmm. <laughs> it. Did that's all it took. Yeah, it, it, that's all it took because they had they had, they had the same skin complexion. And she had a big afro, just like her. So, yeah, yeah. So I I, 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 I thought that was an amazing story. I was like, "Why get out of here? They mistook you for Angela Davis." She said, "Yeah." I said, wow, okay, okay. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now it's a sore surprise since she didn't get arrested. She she uh, can tell the story. <laughs> yeah. But then they really arrested Angela Davis. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, I don't I don't know. Um I don't know where it was. I don't know if it was in New York or Jamaica, I forget. But they were in they were in the same vicinity. Wow. Yeah, I don't have any cool stories like that, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, King Kennedy, when they, you know, one of those where were you when type of, did you ever ask? I never even thought to ask. I okay. never even thought about it. I think I will now, though, but I, I'm i mad that I, it never occurred to me okay. to ask. Yeah, I'm going to ask my mom, too. Yeah, that's 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 a good thing that you brought up, bro. I'm gonna ask yeah, it's a good question. I like that. Never thought about it. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna get her perspective and what 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 her thoughts were. Yeah. Yeah, what that day was like, and I mean, we've all seen footage and everything, documentaries and different things like that mm-hmm. in regards to it. But when you hear from someone this near and dear with you, it take on a different tone. Yeah. Yeah. And you really in the moment because you're hearing, oh man, I cried for three days straight and this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm going to ask. I need to know now. I need to know. Mm-hmm. Um, But we also need to put a fork in it, fellas. I think we are done. We got to wrap it. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, dude. Yes, this conversation could go on. It was yeah. on and on. Put it on, to the on. break is on. <laughs> yes, yes. Another another doozy. Another good one. Another doozy. Um, thank you. Thank you guys for playing along with me. Oh, you're ready. Um <laughs> for this, this here episode of Not Right, Not Wrong. Um, making opinions cool again on WKRP in Cincinnati, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that show was funny too. I love that, that show. Was a cool show. That was a very cool show. That, that was show was funny. Show. Yeah, yeah. For real. Yeah, I remember Wait, that show. It, Who was it? Ted Reed, Lonnie Anderson. Yeah. Uh-huh. Venus Flytrap. Yeah. Venus Flytrap, yeah. Flytrap. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. I used to well, love that show. That show. Funny, um, WKRP in Cincinnati, Benson. Anyway, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. you. Yeah, we can go on and off about <laughs> all of those. Oh, yeah. Thank you, good people, for listening, for watching. Um, if you're only listening, you are missing out. You need to see these visuals. Get into these visuals, please. Into Subscribe. <laughs> Come on, stop playing. Subscribe. Subscribe, like, share, do all of the things. All of that. that. Learn with us, grow with us, support us. Let's do it together. And we'll catch you guys next week. Fellas, thank you. Let's go. (laughs) Sir, yes, ma'am. Peace and blessings. Yes, yes. yes. Peace.